As you can see, for the first time in many months, the tank's now down on its suspension, which is completely assembled. This is a great time um, just to go through in some detail um, what it took to get to this stage in the game. Start off with there's some numbers for you. On each side of the tank there are five suspension units which consist of a spring, a suspension lever and the bogey unit underneath. It's a Horseman-esque type um, suspension in that we've got a main spring in between the suspension units that compresses as the suspension comes up against an obstacle and that gives you the cushioning effect. These have to be pre-loaded, these springs, prior to coming in and set to a certain length, which sounds very simple, uh, but is quite more involved. Today we're going to assemble one of the road springs, or the suspension springs. Uh, a lot of wear and tear, as in all the suspension components. It consists of the two springs and a spring guide assembly, which is this component, these components here. Basically that rod rides up inside that tube, thus and the springs are mounted in there. It keeps the, stops the spring from doing that when it's actually compressed as the suspension works. Next job is the, the messy bit. We're going to put some grease inside the tube. This assembly is greased. It's only greased on assembly. There's no lubrication after it's together. So it's particularly important to make sure it is well lubricated same thing again, can you turn that tube round for me please Bob? I'll just... Okay, so we'll now put the first spring on the tube. Then there is a spacer washer which has to go on next, which again just needs a little bit of grease on the surface. Slides over the tube. And the next stage is to slip the spring onto the tube. And we have to They're now home. That's the basic assembly put together. The next stage will be locking it all together, which you need to start using the spring compressor on. What we got? We got 40 mil to go. Okay, <clears throat> just in a quick measurement, as we've already pre-assembled some of these, Prior to this one, we know that the finished dimension from there to there is 810 millimetres when it's correctly assembled. At the moment, we're about 840, so we've got to go a little bit more on the compressor. Okay, so we're now going to fit the tailing nut, which, as you can see, is made out of phosphor bronze, special shape. We, my colleague Andy manufactured a special tool so we can, it's a castellated tube nut. The idea why it's that shape and so big is it has to go inside the hole and support the end of the, the spring tube, uh, the spring, the guide rather, when it's in the end so that when the, when the tube moves, the spring guide moves, it's got support at both ends. So the first job, you have to put this washer in, which is a bit tricky. Excuse my... Okay, that's the washer in now. Engage now. I've now engaged the thread on the end of the rod. I'll wind that up a little. Now we've fitted the nut. It's just a matter of uh, trial and error, or do we just keep compressing the spring until we're happy with the correct? We'll compress it again, tighten up, compress it again, tighten up, till we get to the finish finish size, and we're happy with the fit. We're going to just nip the nut up again, just do a quick measurement, see how close we are. 
13 mil to go. So roughly half an inch still left to compress the spring. So there or thereabouts. Let's just check if we've got that little bit of movement. I guess um, I have to go and get uh, another piece of equipment. <laughs> Especially calibrated piece of timber. Yeah, that's all right. Final stage of the assembly is to fit the lock nut and spring washer again up inside the spring tube, which we're about to do. And another little tricky assembly job with the magnetic. Well, well, whatever I've done with it. <laughs> this is not. <laughs> That's now got the spring washer in place over the thread on the end of the rod. Find a little bit of greasing. Spinning the nut on now. Just coming up to the point where it's going to start to lock. Ready, Bob. That completes the basic assembly of the spring. We just need to now remove the spring compressor. Okay, so with the springs, once they're compressed, they're actually the third thing that goes in when we assemble the suspension. The first thing that goes in are the suspension levers. In order that they pivot correctly, the suspension levers have got three of these sort of pins in them. Now, they've been all worn unevenly as the tank's been used throughout the years. The only way we could compensate for that was to get the bushes that they sit in and get them all made under size. Then we had to hand ream each individual bush to suit the actual pin that was going in it. If we go back to the numbers again, each one of these suspension units has three of these pins in, so therefore it's 15 pins a side, 30 on the whole tank, that all have to be individually marked, individually reamed, so that that pin goes in that particular bush. Here's a close-up of one of the bushes that we've had to be made. This is the old one. Um, the pin goes through here, in this manner and in order to maintain an oil tight seal we have these rubber bushes which there are a lot of them all the way around the suspension they cushion up against the uh, bush in this, in this way we compress the bush using the jubilee clip that spreads it out and forms the oil tight seal when we were assembling these we noticed that there was a lot of chamfers that had been just lightly filed on the bottom of these bushes and when we started putting it together, we realised why. Because as we lift up the suspension unit, if the um, seal catches the hard edge of the bush, it has a tendency to twist and won't make the seal. So this is a bit of mechanical archaeology, really, um, in the sense that we replicated this by putting this um, chamfer in, and that, with a bit of grease, they slid up lovely. You can see one in position here, the bush on the inside, the Jubilee clip, which has been tightened up, that's compressing and spreading the rubber seal uh, and making it oil tight. If you look down here, hopefully you can see a number of these rubber bump stops that were made by Les, one of our volunteers. He did an excellent job of these, a director pattern, and they fitted like a glove. The bogey units underneath they have a pin in as well, one of the three that we've talked about, and they pivot on that centre pin. You could imagine that in the factory when these things were made, they would have been slung from the roof, they would have had special jigs and all kinds of wonderful tooling in order to get these things in. 
We had none of that and have to overcome all of the lifting problems with a tank in situ on elephant legs using the tools and the components that we had at hand. What? Number four, yes. No, this is. With the suspension in place, the final part of assembly to assemble the entire running gear on the tank is the two jockey wheels on either side and the two idlers, which are used to maintain the tension on the tracks and adjust it if necessary. The two jockey wheels are in place now, and the only thing that remains is to fit the idler wheels. The jockey wheels have their own problems, which we've had to overcome, but thankfully they're all now fully fitted and fully operational.